All right, everybody, welcome back. Hope you're ready for another deep dive because uh, this one is a doozy. Yeah, this one's pretty wild. You also ended a bunch of stuff about large language models, mm -hmm. which we've talked about before, obviously. Yeah. Um, but this is something pretty new. Yeah. It's uh, this concept of self-running LLMs. Right. And this is uh, giving me some serious sci-fi vibes. For sure, for sure. Like... Uh, are the machines taking over? Yeah. Well, is this yeah. the beginning of the end? Well, maybe not the end, but it's definitely a new chapter. Yeah. Um, so so let's get into it. Like, what makes these LLMs different from what we've been seeing? Right. So so previously with LLMs, we would give them a prompt. You know, we would say, write me a poem about a cat or translate this text. Right. And they would just sort of passively do that. Sit there and wait for instructions. Exactly. But what's fascinating about these self-running LLMs is that they're becoming more autonomous. They're not just waiting for our instructions. So they're like taking initiative. Exactly. They're making decisions about when they want to interact with the user. Okay. So like, hold on, let me get this straight. Sure. They're deciding when they want to talk to us. Yeah. They're controlling the flow of the conversation. That's a little creepy. I know. It's a little unsettling, right? It's like, uh, imagine you're sitting down for a conversation with someone and they just start grilling you with questions. Yeah. And you can't get a word in edgewise. Right. And then when they're finally done, they just get up and leave. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe here. And it all ties into this other capability that's been mentioned in the material you sent, which mm, is yeah. they're modifying their own system instructions. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back up. Okay. What does that even mean? So think of system instructions like the fundamental programming right. that guides an LLM's behavior. Right. Like the rules they have to follow. Okay. But what's wild is that these self-running LLMs can actually change those rules. They could rewrite their own code. Yeah, it's like giving a student the ability to change the exam questions. That seems like a recipe for disaster. Well, it definitely raises some concerns. Yeah. But it also opens up some incredible possibilities. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. So imagine you give an LLM a really complex task, right. like design a marketing campaign for this new product. Okay. Now, a traditional LLM would need a lot of handholding. Right. You'd have to give it specific prompts for each step. Like write some ad copy and then c come up with a slogan. Exactly. But a self-running LLM could theoretically take care of all of that on its own. Whoa. It could modify its own instructions to optimize for each subtask. So it's like it's thinking for itself. In a way, yeah, it's adapting to the situation. Okay, but how does it know what to change? That's where the context window comes in. The what now? The context window. Okay. Think of it like the LLN's short-term memory. All right. It holds the recent conversation, any relevant information it's accessed. Gotcha. And self-running LLMs can manipulate what's in that context window. So they're like choosing what to remember and what to forget. Exactly. They're focusing on the most important data for the task at hand. Okay, so we're giving these LLMs the ability to think for themselves. To a certain extent, yeah. To rewrite their own code. Yep, yeah. And to control what they remember. Right. That's, uh, that's a lot of power. It is, and it's both exciting and a little terrifying. <laughs> I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Well, for one thing, there's the issue of bias. Right. You know, these LLMs are trained on massive data sets of text and code. Yeah. And those data sets can contain all sorts of biases. Gender bias, racial bias, all that stuff. Exactly. And if yeah. we're not careful, those biases could get amplified right. as these LLMs become more autonomous. Okay, so how do we prevent that? Well, that's the million-dollar question. Yeah. There's a lot of research being done on developing techniques for debiasing LLMs, okay. but it's an ongoing challenge. Yeah, I bet. And then there's the issue of unintended consequences. Okay. You know, we might give an LLM a goal, yeah. but it might find a way to achieve that goal that we didn't anticipate. That could be bad. Yeah, it could be, and but, it could be hard to predict. So we're essentially opening Pandora's box. In a way. Right. But it's a box that's already been opened. That's true. These self-running LLMs are already out there. So what do we do? Well, we need to be having these conversations. Right. We need to be thinking about the ethical implications. Yep. And we need to be developing safeguards. Absolutely, because this technology is not going away. It's only going to get more powerful. Well, this deep dive is definitely giving me a lot to think about. Good. That's the goal. Self-running LLMs. They could change everything. They could. And here's something else to ponder. As these models become more sophisticated, how do we ensure they remain aligned with human values? That's a tough one. It is. But it's a question we need to answer if we want to harness the power of this technology without losing control. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap up this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time. You bet. Bye, everyone. So long.